Guys, uh, today I'm gonna film a quick video. Uh, let me turn up the lights real quick. I'm gonna film a quick video about uh, my Keurig. I, I think it's 2.0. Uh, I'm kind of limited on my camera angles. All right, so we're ready to go here. Um, the reason why I'm filming this video is because I'm gonna try to look directly at the camera. Um, the reason why I'm filming this video is because Stranger Things came out last night and I've been binge watching the second season of Stranger Things. So uh, I got nothing else to do, waiting for the girlfriend to get home from her grandparents. And she really likes the way I hacked our Keurig 2.0. And yes, this is another hack video for the Keurig 2.0, but I think you'll be satisfied with this one because all around it's, it's permanent and it's like, it's legit, so. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how it works since I already hacked mine. Uh, and I'm gonna go through the process of how I did it. So I'm gonna plug it in because I usually leave it unplugged. Uh, this will give you full access to the menu, um, the full menu. Um, so you can do anything from a 14 ounce to a cafe thing, whatever they call that. The main reason why I did this to my Keurig is because uh, my girlfriend was tired of hitting eight ounces like five different times to fill up a 24 ounce uh, mason jar that we have that she uses for tea. Uh, some Keurig 2.0s, they have like a chrome ring around the top here. Uh, as long as it's, you know, a Keurig 2.0, like it says on the front, uh, you should be fine. So it just got done warming up. Uh, it says lift begin. Uh, there's um, an old thing in here, but you can just leave it normal. Uh, the needles in there as normal and shut it. And you got the full menu. So with the full menu, it gives you the option of doing the full coffee mug. Uh, there's these different things that you can click on, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, basically gives you the, number two gives you the option of 14 ounce, 12 ounce, and strong. Number three gives you the option of 14 and 12, again, just not strong. Number four, eight, ten, four, six, four, six, eight, ten, uh, strong and froth, whatever that is. Uh, and this one's just the normal one again, not strong. And there's the carafe thing. So it gives you the option to do like multiple things. You don't have to worry about what cup is in here either. So you can use all, compatible. like it's compatible with all cups, which is awesome. And you don't have to fiddle with any magnets or this needle that moves back and forth. You don't have to fiddle with anything. After this is done, you'll have full access to the menu at all times, uh, which is perfect because if you want to just do, you know, 14 ounces of water, you can hit start, it'll run it 14 ounces of water. Uh, so, yeah, let's get uh, let's get started now that it's all hot and stuff. I'm going to unplug it and flip the camera back around and I'll show you how I did it. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is lift this uh, top tab up. There's going to be two screws right on here. I'm going to try to go quick because I don't want this video to be forever. It will help if you have the right size bit. In which I do not. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, back out again. This one will work much better. So just two screws. So after removing these two screws from underneath where the needles are, you can go ahead and close it and this front panel should kind of just peel right off. You will want to open it and kind of just gently remove it. If it gives you any resistance, just take your time. It should slide right out. And then you see these little clips around here? You're going to want to undo those clips without breaking them. Do it very gently. Looks like there is one, two, three, four, five of those clips. And what that'll do is it'll give you access to where the magnet's located, or the magnet sensor. Basically what you're going to be left with after you get those clips undone all the way down the sides and the front here, is you're going to be looking for a little sensor that's placed directly in this lower area of the front. It's a little sensor, the top of it will look like this, and it should look something like this from the top. You pry that up and out, 
and basically what this sensor does is when it senses the magnet uh, or the appropriate magnet it will actually close and loop those wires together after the right magnet is sensed. So basically to bypass this sensor you cut those two wires off as seen here and just splice them together. And what I did is I spliced them together and just shrunk wrap them. And you just tuck them back in there. Alright, so basically you take those wires that you just spliced together uh, and it's really up to you on whether you want to shrink wrap them or put a little electrical tape over them just to keep them safe. And you just close down those snaps all the way back around. And that part of this hack is complete. This drill is probably overkill, huh? I use it for everything though. It makes everything easier. What we did is we bypassed the uh, magnet sensor. Um, and the next step would be to bypass the optical sensor. Uh, the optical sensor, it senses the color or the ring around the top of certain packets. And by bypassing that, you can use any uh, K-cup, um, even the off-brands. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty cool part about this. Um, let's get to that. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go back here where the wiring is. And you're going to look for the only green wire. Um, it is a green wire that is leads down to the bottom, uh, as you can see right here. And you're just going to go ahead and cut that green wire. And what this is going to do is it's going to bypass the optical sensor. If you're not familiar with the optical sensor in these Keurig 2.0s, it is located right here in this square part. There you go. There's the optical sensor right in there. And it is just tucked back away in here so that when this comes down on top of the K-cup, uh, it sees through this little hole which kind of K-cup you have in this dispenser. So when you close it, it'll give you a message. And if it's not the correct type of Keurig cup, it'll say error. Uh, this K-cup is not compatible with your Keurig machine. So by bypassing that, you can use any K-cup you'd like. So in combination, after you're all wrapped up, you can go ahead and put this cover back on the front. Put your screws back in. Alright, so now that you have everything back together, um, we'll go ahead and plug everything back in and test it out. Uh, I unplugged it as I was working on it, just for, you know, safety reasons, I guess. So I'm powering it back on. It should be relatively warm, so it's only going to preheat for a minute. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you guys the full access menu uh, that I basically showed you in the beginning of this video. Alright, so now that our Keurig is all put back together, that's going to preheat as normal. Uh, you won't see any real big differences, but uh, with or without a K-cup in there, once you close it, you get the full access menu. You can use K-cups that aren't normally compatible with your machine. And so uh, any K-cup you put in there, you're still going to get the same menu. Uh, the menu will allow you to go through all these different options. You know, if you don't need this fancy menu, um, it's still nice to have the option to do a 14 ounce glass. And just to show that everything works properly, I'm going to go ahead and take this K-cup out. And I'm going to do just water, and everything works as it should. Uh, this will void your warranty, so just be aware of that. Alright guys, so I hope this video helped you, um, you know, get more out of your Keurig 2.0. But uh, yeah, leave a comment if you have any questions, and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you are interested in these kind of videos. You guys have a good one, I appreciate you guys watching my videos and more to come. I appreciate you guys.